Hey guys, welcome to this Friday's episode of Inside Irish Dancing. Before I add our guest, I just wanted to remind you guys that IDM has an amazing opportunity to recognize um, your amazing teachers. So make sure to go to the link in our in our bio, <clears throat> excuse me, and nominate your teacher. Because um, we know that teachers have been doing so much right now and we couldn't be doing it without them. So let me add our guest for today. And we should be good for today's interview. I should be joining. Hi. Hi. I am here with the amazing Hope from Celtic Steps. Um, would you like to take a minute to introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm Hope Guanera. I dance at Celtic Steps, and I'm a part of the U19 Ladies. Awesome. Okay, so obviously, you know, the world is kind of in a different place right now. How are you doing with balancing that difference um, and keeping kind of a normal life? Yeah, so like everyone else, COVID has kind of flipped my life upside down. I was planning on going to college last fall, but I decided to take a gap year and focus on dance, um, kind of for my last hurrah. And um, right now I'm really blessed to have classes, so that's been good. <laughs> Awesome. Um, so what has been your biggest accomplishment so far and why is it so important to you? My biggest accomplishment is probably recalling and getting in the top 50 at Worlds um, in 2019. And that was my first time recalling. Um, so it was a really big deal for me. And in, in years past, I had a lot of injury. So that was just an amazing experience. That's awesome. So to kind of contrast that question, um, what has been a difficult moment so far? So I think probably every year I've had an injury, um, which has been a bummer sometimes and really discouraging. But um, the biggest disappointment was 2019 nationals in Vancouver and just one week before I was supposed to compete I tore my calf and I had a 10% chance that I would compete and everything was prepaid um, so we decided to travel to Vancouver and um, basically we went into it like I was competing but I uh, had to withdraw from the competition about two minutes before I went on stage. Wow, that's insanely difficult. I cannot imagine having to deal with that. And I mean, at least you've kind of rebounded from that. And now you're here pushing as hard as you can. But that must be a mental setback in the moment. Yeah, it was definitely um, shocking and disappointing at the same time, because I wanted to uh, be a good example. Um, with my dance company, but also to uh, do what was best for my body. So it was a hard decision. Yeah, no, I completely get it. And always doing what's best for your, you know, health is what always comes first. So I'm glad that you made that decision and didn't injure yourself um, anymore. So with, you know, COVID-19, is there anything that you feel like has improved in your dancing because of the way that classes are running? Um, so when we were all on Zoom, I think I was really improving in uh, my foot placement and all of the basics. Um, and I got to go to the gym uh, more consistently. Um, but a big thing for me was actually understanding uh, my self-motivation and how important self-talk is when you don't have uh, your teachers present or your friends to motivate you. Totally. I, I completely agree with you in that sense. It's a whole nother ball game. And I bet every single person, you know, watching can relate to the struggle of, um, you know, not necessarily having that support system with you at home. And you could be in a zoom dance class and just kind of going through a tough time. And so I think that's a great point. Um, totally. And we'll touch on mental health a little bit later 
in our interview. Um, but for your next question, who are some of your biggest inspirations? I think some of the top tier dancers that I look up to are Orla Godley and Liam Costello, uh, but also one of my peers, um, Liam, or, sorry, <laughs> um, Eric Crone. And he's in my age group and he is also at Celtic Steps, but every time I'm in practice with him, he just blows my mind away. Um, and he's just so determined. Um, so I really look up to him too. But also every dancer that I'm in class with is just inspiring to me. Um, we all cheer, on, cheer each other on. Um, and that's one part that I love about the Irish dance community is that we're just so encouraging. And um, also my teachers, they're, they're also such an inspiration to me. Um, and I hope to be a leader like them one day. That's amazing. And I'm so glad that you have that support system from your teachers, because at the end of the day, you know, that is such a big part of a dancer's success is their teachers. I mean, a dancer can do so much on their own, but, you know, teachers, you know, are the ones who are, you know, completely are professionals um, in Irish dancing and know how to get their kids to where they get. So, I mean, I think that is so amazing that you have that. Um, so obviously right now, competitions are kind of on hold, kind of not. We're going into the U.S. Nationals and Canadian Nationals soon. Um, so what are some of your goals and dreams you're kind of working towards, like, right now? I think my main goal is to podium at Nationals. Um, that was probably the biggest one this year. And then hopefully um, to just keep dancing and keep it in my life as long as possible. I think that's an important goal because, I mean, as you just said, it's important to kind of set those competition goals and then just the loving dance goals. And for some people right now, that's what the entirety of Irish dancing has become is just loving the form. And I think that's so important um, that you brought that up. So thank you for making that point. Um, so I'm going to circle it back to mental health. Um, this year has been difficult. The past year has been difficult, to say the least. And mental health is an issue that has really come to light in the Irish dancing community. Um, how important do you think it is? And what is your advice to dancers who are still struggling with it right now? Yeah, so um, one of my kind of bad days at dance, my teacher asked me, um, what if you took mental health as seriously as you took physical health? Because I'm always trying to strive to, um, like, go to the gym as uh, many times a week as possible and overcome those mental barriers um, kind of in the gym or at dance practice. But sometimes um, that approach doesn't work <laughs> um, when I'm frustrated with myself. Um, and sometimes you just have to be honest with yourself even outside of dance practice. And that's where you kind of make um, the biggest leaps in your mental health and self-talk and also reaching out to uh, people that you trust really helpful. Um, when I go to class, um, I have a group of friends that always cheer me on when they notice that I'm kind of getting down on myself or I'm doubting my uh, capabilities. Um, but also don't letting, uh, not letting like one bad experience define you um, is really important. Um, yeah. That is so important. Um, I mean, as I already said, it's just been a crazy year. I mean, everyone can relate to that statement and your experience is going to be definitely helpful to so many kids because at the end of the day, peers can really get you through and your teachers, anyone surrounding you can get you through those tough moments. And so um, I know I talked to Ella Chalog a little while back and she just really said, you know, go talk to someone. And, you know, you're kind of talking about the same thing as, you know, using that support system to cheer you on. And I just think, you know, everyone watching needs to find your support system, you know, even if it's not someone at dance and just let them, you know, help you be the best that you can be. Um, I think that is so, so important. So to kind of stick on a similar question, what is your advice to dancers who are in lockdown? It can be dance, it can be mental health, it can be anything. Um, I 
I think the biggest thing is if you're getting discouraged on trying to figure out how to be the best dancer you can be outside of dance practice is to find your identity in who you are rather than like what you do. And that can propel you into the things that you do like dance and um, just understanding that you are an amazing person and you are loved and you can get through, through this tough time um, and reach out to people on Zoom or FaceTime um, and something that my dance friends and I did where we went on to Zoom, did little yoga sessions together um, and created different exercise challenges, uh, which kind of boosted our um, spirits and the lockdown. That is so great. I've loved, you know, with every single person who I've interviewed so far, it's so fun to hear what every different person has been doing with their school. Like you did yoga. Um, I know some people have been doing like workout challenges in a group chat. And I think, you know, that is so important to have because it is kind of impossible to keep yourself motivated with just you. I mean, getting together with a group is so, so important. And now when talking about a group, we, we've already touched on this a little bit, um, but obviously having a support system in Irish dancing is so important. Um, you've already mentioned people who have kind of been there and helped you through it, but you know, if you don't mind restating it, who is your support system? Um, how are they so supportive? Um, and how important, or how important do you think a support system is in Irish dancing? Um, so I think the most encouraging people um, that are kind of like my cheerleaders um, are, of course, my parents um, and my teachers. They uh, continue to remind me that I have gone through many and big um, victories. So those small victories um, need to be recognized also when you want to continue on. And um, definitely my dance friends, they're just, uh, they're my rock and my like support. Um, like without them, I feel like foundation of our dance would crumble. Um, they just build me up uh, when I'm feeling down. And um, I also have a couple of PTs and trainers that um, keep me at my best. So I'm really blessed for them. That is amazing. Okay, so for our last question, it's kind of a unique question. Obviously, being an Irish dancer, we're in a different style of sport. It's not football. It's not ballet. Um, what about the Irish dance world do you think is so incredibly unique and special? I think um, the most unique thing that uh, makes our chance special is that we have one day each year that is specific to the Irish culture um, and kind of like the Irish dance day um, for St. Patrick's Day. And, but as Irish dancers, we get to enjoy that kind of energy every time we go into the dance studio or um, into a competition. And Irish dance is uh, an art form that combines like the artisticness and the athleticism at the same time, um, which just makes it just more enjoyable and uh, attractive to people watching. Yes, no, I could not agree more. I mean, obviously there's a million things that our sport, you know, has that is unique. But at the end of the day, you know, like you said, it's just amazing to, you know, even to share a day like St. Patrick's Day where you can look on social media and every single Irish dancer is doing the same thing. Um, so I couldn't agree more. So thank you so much for having this interview with us today. Um, I think it'll help so many. And yeah, I just can't thank you, much. Can't thank you enough. <laughs> for having me. Of course. The amazing hope from Celtic Steps, everyone. Talk to you later. Thank you. Bye.